Here we go with a bluegrass favorite. This is Road to Columbus. Welcome to the basic melody tutorial for Road to Columbus. Um, this one is, you know, it gets played at all the bluegrass jams and it's really, really fun to do. Now, I will tell you right up front, there's a couple things that are a little bit challenging about this tune and there's kind of no getting around it. So I will make it as manageable as possible for you as you're sort of on your fiddle journey so that, you know, it doesn't seem too out of reach. And then when you're ready to, you know, to really dig into some of the tougher stuff, just go over to the advanced and we'll, we'll handle some of that there. But we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to be in third position, things like that, but you've got this. I'll walk you through it. It's going to be cool. So first and foremost, you may have noticed if you watch the performance video that I started this tune out with an intro, kind of a you know, like a, here, here it comes, you know, and much more dramatic of an intro than just your basic, you know, potatoes, right? And so I'm going to show you that intro because that was how, when, you know, Bill Monroe recorded this tune all those years ago, that's how they started the tune. And so it sort of goes like that when people do it in jams. Not always. I mean, and certainly if somebody doesn't know it or isn't ready for it, it's okay. You can still start the tune. Not going to hurt anything, but I'm going to show you the intro so that you can kind of have that under your belt if you're ready for it. And whoever starts the tune is, uh, would be the one that, to do the intro. So if you're just in a jam and somebody else calls it, then they may do it. And, um, uh, but if they, you know, I've had some people call, this tune in a jam and go, but I don't, you know, I'm not really good at the intro. And I'm like, oh, oh, pick me. I can do the intro. And then, you know, I let them start it. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> So that's our intro. So the timing sounds like this. It's one, two, three. So that takes a little bit of practice to get the feel for that. And certainly you will have the accompanying sheet music for this, but I really mostly want you to listen to it. And there's, there, it would be amazing. Listen to my version, all of that, but go back and listen to some of the original versions of this tune and get a feel for how the groove works and just sort of get it into your head. There's nothing better to learn traditional music than that. Just be listening, always be listening. I've got my version and the way that I'm gonna show it to you, which I think is gonna be, you know, easy for you to manage and, you know, it's gonna make sense for you on the fiddle, but that actually does not replace really hearing the tune as it was when it was written and kind of coming from those original sources. So always be coming at it from both of those angles. Listen to it the original way and then come hang out with me and I can break things down for you. I think that's a really good combo in terms of learning these styles of music. So we're gonna go one, two, oh, and then two, 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 one, oh. And I like to do a little slide with it. Two, one, two. Oh, one, two. And that's a low two, if you can get that in there, because it gives a little bluesier feel. One, oh. Two, oh. Two. Triplet, one, two, one. Now, high three. Slide down to regular three, then one. So let's try that. Two, oh, one, two, three. Now, you're probably going to land on the down bow here. And generally speaking, we don't pick up and reset in fiddle music, but we're gonna pick up and reset in this one. So we're gonna come in. Now, right off the bat, you need to know that the timing on this requires a little bit of, 
just a little bit of extra zhuzh. It needs a little little push right there at the beginning. So we're coming into one, two. So it's a little early on that D one. So it's one, one, three, one. Are you listening in the late? Sorry, Christmas Carol, what are you gonna do? Two, one, four. Actually, let's go open A right here. O. So that's O, O, two, O, one, O, three. Now we're gonna go up to the E string. Welcome to the advanced tutorial for one of my favorites, Road to Columbus. By the way, you know, I've talked about this being a bluegrass tune and it absolutely is, but I've played this in a contest several times as a tune of choice. So, you know, not a breakdown, certainly not a waltz, but that third tune, um, if you're in a, a three tune contest situation, it makes a great tune of choice and you can have so much fun with it because the tune of choice category is really sort of a catch-all. You can play, you know, rags and shottishes and polkas and whatever, and whatever this is, which is, I don't know, some sort of non, non-specific bluegrass tune style, but yeah, it's super fun. So I just wanted to let you know that totally, it totally works for, so any of those kinds of things. So we're gonna start with the intro. And the only thing we're gonna change about the intro from what I taught in the basic melody is to just throw in some droning strings, just to fill it out a little bit. Right, so open E droning string here. Open A there. Double first finger. Okay, now, when we get into the A part, so open A with that, and then when we go down to the high G3, keep the first finger on the D. Fourth finger slide here. Four, four, two. Now, I apologize for what I'm about to, to do to you, but this is the way Kitty Baker played it. So check it out. We're gonna go into second position. So what we're gonna do, third finger on the D is gonna slide up to an A note. Second finger on the A is gonna slide up to a D note. There it is. Now leave the third finger down. Take the second finger off and replace it with low first finger. That gives you a C natural, which is the flat seven degree of the D scale, which this is a D chord. So when I do that, that means that I'm about to change chords, which I am. Like that. So let's try that. Up top, 